Well, what's more iconic about Christmas than Santa and his flying reindeer? But what do we really know about Santa's little hooved friends? Let's find out as we talk about the five amazing things you probably didn't know about Santa's reindeer. Be sure to stick around to the end of this video because I've got a bonus that you don't want to miss. Number one. The reindeer's eyes are blue? During the winter months, reindeer's eyes turn blue. Reindeer are also missing a yellow filter that we humans have on our eyes. The blue eyes and the ability to see UV light help them to not only see better in the snow, but also to find food and to avoid predators. Number two. What do you mean that we got the names wrong? As we mentioned in previous videos, most of America did not celebrate Christmas until the, around the 1800s. During that time, a number of New England newspapers started printing um, anonymously uh, written poems, one of which became known as Twas the Night Before Christmas. However, it's had several titles and different authors attributed to it. And this is where we get the reindeer and their names. However, if you look at Clement C. Moore, one of the uh, alleged authors of this poem, his handwritten notes has Donner as Donder. However, if we go back to the 1823 poem that was originally published, Donner was Dunder and Blitzen was Blixum. Number three. What do you mean that they're all girls? What about Rudolph? In the winter months, the only adult reindeer that have antlers are females and fixed males. Looking at the original names, we can affirm this fact. For instance, Vixen is a spirited, sometimes contemptible female. Cupid means loving. If you look at the old um, version of Twas the Night Before Chris Christmas, Dunder well, that's an old brewing term meaning to use the, the yeast from the previous batch to create a new batch of beer. Blixum originally meant a person of unknown or immoral pedigree who acts as if they're noble or pious. Thus, Santa probably didn't know who her father was, but she acted prideful and proper nevertheless. As for Rudolph, he is the only male out of the bunch. The fact that he has antlers means, well, let's just say Santa removed the fruit from his stocking years ago. Number four. What do you mean that he didn't always use reindeer? In some parts of the world, Santa Claus was a Catholic church replacement for Bacchus or Dionysus. Both are gods of orgies who rode flying chariots pulled by all manner of wild creatures ranging from leopards, tigers, and elephants to panthers, bulls, and griffins. This version of Santa usually wore green, was young to middle-aged, and usually carried an ivy-covered staff or torch. This early version of Santa became Lord Noel in England. For, um, this was because he would go into taverns and he would say, Know well our Lord, know him better man. Later, Charles Dickens would redo the Lord Noel character become, to become the ghost of Christmas present. It is also why the French call Santa Pierre Noel. In Washington Irving's 1809 work, A History of New York from the Beginning of the World to the End of the Dutch Dynasty, Santa is depicted as a man wearing a wide-brimmed hat and Flemish attire who smoked a pipe that filled the sky and took on magical shapes. This version of Santa Claus has him as a pious earth elemental called an Olaf. Um, his name was Saint Nicholas. This creature sailed on a ship called the Gudvrau 
and then he delivered toys by riding a magically self-propelled cart that more bounded that flew from house to house over the treetops. Even today in many Scandinavian and European countries, Santa is said to arrive on a ship where then he'll come into town riding on a white horse. This tradition is meant to tie Santa with the Crusades. In some stories, the white horse flies and Santa will have a Moorish imp with him. Um, this Moorish character, called Zwarte Piet, reflects upon time when Europe was occupied by Muslims until they were finally driven out by the Viking mercenaries. In Germanic countries, the Campania is a were-goat type of creature called the Krampus, who kidnaps naughty children either to eat or drown as he pleases. They even have Krampus parades where the Krampus beats onlookers with switches if they get too close. Gotta love those Germans. The idea of Santa riding a flying horse is actually a Catholic replacement of the Norse god Odin, who rode a flying white horse with eight legs. Um, in this strange turn of events, the, the horse that he's fly, flying with is his grandson, Slipnir, who is Loki's child. In recent times, historical revisionists have posited that Thor would sometimes be replaced with Odin. Um, this caused Thor rode a cart pulled by two goats. Um, one is called Thin Teeth or Gaps in Teeth and the other one is called Teeth Grinder. Um, however, uh, there, there really isn't much evidence to this, but um, because Yule really means goat, um, they, they kind of put it together as being that and the fact that the goats flew. Some 12 years after Washington Irving wrote his piece on a sailing cart riding Olaf, another poem came out to modify things a bit. In 1821, an anonymous poem was published called Old Santa Claus with Much Delight. In it, Santa only had a single reindeer to pull his sleigh. This is the first time we actually tie a reindeer to Santa. Two years later, in 1823, an anonymous poem called Account of a Visit from St. Nicholas gave Santa seven more reindeer. Ironically, there was probably nearly as many people who claimed to have written the poem, many of which were close friends with Washington Irving. Number five. What does Norway have to do with any of this? From the aforementioned 19th century poems, we know that Santa's reindeer are super tiny. Svaldard reindeer are the tiniest of all the reindeer and also the closest to the North Pole. A mere 650 miles away from the North Pole on the Svalbard Islands of Norway. Most Svalbard reindeer males rarely reach anything close to 200 pounds, while the females do good to reach 150 pounds. They are generally about 3 foot high and about 5 foot long. Conversely, other species of reindeer are twice this weight and about one and a half to two feet longer and higher. The Svalbard species almost became extinct due to, due to overhunting. Now some groups are using their association with Santa to explain the need for conservation and proper natural resources management. Bonus! All right, what in the world would mushrooms have to do with Santa Claus? As we stated earlier, Santa didn't even have his reindeer until the 1820s. Whoever wrote Twas the Night Before Christmas knew a lot about Sami and Siberian cultures that use reindeer. It's from these cultures that we get the word shaman. Shaman often wear red and white in honor of the flygark mushroom. This potentially deadly mushroom is found all over the world and is a powerful hallucinogenic. These shamans will feed the reindeer mushrooms and then as the reindeer begin to trip out, the shaman collect the reindeer urine which the shaman drinks. Um, so this has led some academics to posit that Santa is actually a shamanic urine drinking elf and that the flying of the deer is due to the metaphysical usage of the flygark mushroom. So there you have it. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have, give it a thumbs up. That really helps out channel. Uh, share we friends. It, that always helps us out. If you haven't already, and why haven't you if you're watching to the end, go ahead and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you can be alerted to future content. And with that, I'll see you again next time. Bye.